ever saw Kinderwurst in the grocery store in Germany, I had to do a double take because I didn't believe what I was actually looking at. What's up? It's Kelly again and welcome back to my channel. I lived in Germany for 18 months and I moved back to the US about eight months ago. And just as when I was living in Germany and noticing the absence of a lot of American things I was used to seeing, now that I'm back in the US, I'm noticing the absence of some German things. So for today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about eight different German things that I never see in the US. First up is Spätzle. I learned when I was living in Germany that Germans are not shy at all about mixing drinks together, even when it comes to their beer. And while this isn't unheard of in the US, the Germans do it way, way, way more and with so many different types of drinks. For example, I've never seen an American mixing two different types of sodas together unless it's some kid going ham at the soda fountain machine at a restaurant while his mom isn't paying attention. But Germans will mix orange soda with Coke and that's exactly what Spätzle is. And Spätzle isn't even the only type of mass produced drink with this combination. Coca-Cola also makes an orange and Coke mix called Mezzo Mix. And then there's a bunch of grocery stores that have their own generic brand versions, usually called Cola Mix. I bought this Spätzle at a German specialty store near where I live in DC. In fact, you can tell that it's an imported product because it has this label to translate all of the German that's on the can into English. But you wouldn't be able to walk into a normal grocery store in the US and buy Spätzle or Mezzo Mix or Cola Mix at all because we don't have it. In fact, I'm willing to bet that if I walked outside and talked to the first 100 Americans I see and asked them, hey, do you know what Spätzle is? I would get 100 people telling me, no, I don't know what that is. And also, why are you talking to me? I don't know. The second German thing that you never see in the US is a TV tax. In Germany, every single household has to pay a special tax that goes towards financing Germany's public channels. Back before, I think 2013, only Germans who owned a TV or radio had to pay this tax, but it became too difficult for the government to track down who actually owned a TV and a radio. And then with the popularity of personal electronic devices like smartphones and tablets and iPads and so on, it became too difficult for the government to accurately tax people. So they just kind of did a broad stroke tax and now every single household has to pay whether or not you even use the public channels. The flat fee is 1750 euro a month, which comes out to 210 euro a year. We don't have a TV tax in the US. Most of our content on TV and radio is commercialized and so it is funded through advertisements. We do though have the Public Broadcasting Service or PBS, which is public programming. And while it does ultimately receive funding from Congress every year through our taxes, we don't pay a direct TV tax like you have in Germany. When I first moved to Germany, I was told that I needed to buy a parking disc and I had no idea what that was. This is a parking disc and you needed to be able to park in certain time restricted areas in Germany. You basically park and then set this wheel to your arrival time and you're able to round up to the next half hour. Then you set it on your dashboard or you hang it on your windshield with these little suction cups that I have on mine. And then you have to leave the parking space within the maximum amount of time you're allowed to park there plus your arrival time. So if you show up to a parking spot at eight and that's what you set your little wheel at, and the maximum amount of time you're allowed to park in that parking spot is two hours, you have to leave by 10 because eight plus two is 10. I was really thankful for the person who told me to get a parking disc because I used it all the time, not just in Germany, but all throughout Europe as I was driving around. And if I remember correctly, you didn't have to pay to be able to park at these specific types of parking spots. So the accountability for making sure that you leave within the max permitted time was through the disc. We don't have parking discs in the US. We usually only have parking meters or pay machines that give out dashboard tickets with the time you must leave by printed on them. Okay, there is a thing called Kinderwurst in Germany, which I have never seen in the US. Kinderwurst is basically sliced meat 
that is shaped into different forms like a smiley face or a bear and it's done to appeal to children. When I first saw Kinderwurst in the grocery store in Germany I had to do a double take because I didn't believe what I was actually looking at. I've never seen something creatively done with sliced meat before. And it seems to be pretty popular given how much of it is in stock in the stores and Misha told me that there's a German comedian who even referenced Kinderwurst in one of his jokes where he was talking about how his girlfriend still had someone to talk to when she's in the kitchen and looking in the refrigerator because all of the meat smiley faces looking back up at her. I feel like the way I just explained it made it sound even weirder than it already is. We have all different kinds of sliced meats in the US, but I've never seen meat be dressed up like this. For another meat-centric topic, Germany has a dish called Met which is essentially minced raw pork, often served on a roll with salt and pepper and some other seasonings and often onions. And this was strange enough, but it got stranger because there's a thing called a metagel, which is a met hedgehog, which is exactly what it sounds like. You take this minced raw pork and you form it in the shape of a hedgehog where you have either onion slices or pretzel sticks as the spikes of the hedgehog and then the eyes and the nose are formed with olives. I've never seen anything like it before in my entire life. In fact, I've always been told never ever eat raw pork. So the whole concept of Met just completely bewildered me. So much so that I never tried it. I'm sorry to admit it, but I just never could mentally commit to trying Met. It took me 30 years to finally try Scrapple, which is coincidentally another pork dish and it's really popular where I'm from in Pennsylvania. So I think my hesitancy and weariness for trying Met could be assumed. But I'm gonna try it guys. I promise I'm going to try Met when I go to Germany here shortly and I'm putting it out there on the internet so that I absolutely have to follow through with it because everybody knows that's the healthiest way to be held accountable. I've talked about this in a few of my other videos, but it is something that we don't have in the US, which is a national ID. Germans have a national ID and it is compulsory starting at the age of 16. It can be used as almost like a passport for Germans to be able to travel freely throughout most of the countries in Europe as long as they have their national ID and even a few countries outside of Europe. It includes basic information about the holder like their name and their birth date and their address and then there's also some physical description of them like their eye color and their height. We don't have a national ID in the US. The closest thing we have to a national ID is our passport, but most Americans who don't travel outside of the US aren't going to own a passport. So our driver's licenses are usually what people will show as a form of identification. There are some other forms of ID that you can get in the US, like just a plain photo ID, but again, it's not compulsory and it's not uniform across the country, so it's not like this national ID like you have in Germany. We also don't have a quiet law in the US. It varies from town to town in Germany, but generally speaking, on Sundays, you're not allowed to do noisy activities like mowing the lawn or using a really loud vacuum cleaner or washing your car except for in designated areas. And I've even heard of some people getting complaints from their neighbors for holding a barbecue or a grill party. This also extends to nights on weeknights, not just Sundays, and then also on holidays. Fortunately, I never had any issues with the quiet law, but I have some friends and their experience tell me that Germans take this very, very seriously. In the US, we don't have this quiet law. Maybe the lease of your apartment specifies quiet hours or your homeowners association has quiet hours or maybe the hotel you're staying in will specify some quiet hours, things like this. But nationally, we don't have you know, any sort of law or regulation or even social expectation for you to be quiet on a Sunday. In fact, I would say that Sunday is a really popular day for people to go out and get some lawn work done and do chores. So this whole quiet law thing is something you would never see in the US. All right, last one guys. Kindergeld is something you would never see in the US. 
Kindergeld is an allowance that Germans who have children are entitled to, and I think it's about an average of 200 euro that they're paid monthly, depending on how many children, and it's deposited right into their bank account. In the US, we don't have any sort of child allowance. The closest thing we have to Kindergeld is a child tax credit, so you can claim your children on your annual taxes and it can reduce your federal taxes by up to $2,000 per child. All right guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified every single time I post a video, which is every week. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome for the support you've given me and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Kelly Does Her Thing so that you can follow me through my stories. I hope to see y'all there.